Hey guys, you're looking at um, an apothecary that I designed, and I designed it using Forgotten Adventures assets in, in Dungeon Draft, as a matter of fact. And those two things, like peanut butter and jelly, work really, really well together. Um, why do I use Forgotten Adventures? Because they're the only group of artists um, that have created the, the quality and the breadth of assets needed to really world build. You can really make anything with what they've uh, created. And I'm here to do this video today because they've announced their 2.0 edition of their Dungeon Draft assets. So they spent six months learning with me and everyone else in the community um, what really works with Dungeon Draft. And, um, and they built some amazing stuff and I've done a lot of work with their stuff. But now they've uh, taken all that learning and they've deployed it into 2.0 version of all their assets. So this is not backwards compatible. This is uh, something that's, um, you know, you can't open up your old maps and work with this. It does coexist with their old assets, but this is something where, you know, you're gonna wanna get it and start building um, fresh using the 2.0 stuff. But they've really just improved it from top to bottom. And we're going to talk about how they've organized it, portals, expanded patterns, the different shadow paths they've got available and other paths, overlay patches. There's roofs that are really exciting. There's new lighting tools. So we're going to talk about all this stuff today. I'll timestamp everything in the description so you can jump around to what you're interested in. But just right off the bat, it, again, these are different packs than their original versions. They can coexist, so you can um, run a map running both versions, but at some point you're going to want to sunset the old stuff and just start building with the new stuff. Um, again, you, you you download those into your asset folder for Dungeon Draft, and then Dungeon Draft will take a really long time to get them uh, generated the first time, and then after the first time you load it, it'll be easy. What we're looking through is just the new organized walls. Not a lot of new walls here. These are colorable just like they have been, so you can make them darker shades, but they're at least organized now. And just adding this many walls gives you such a huge palette to work with. And now they're organized and it's just kind of easier to do in general. Um, now we're looking at their portals. There's actually some new metal doors, which is great. I, I'm really ready for there to be some uh, stone doors and in, in windows to come out soon. But there's also now a new half window, which is super helpful if you build a lot of buildings in towns like I do you have more options for window widths. And then of course we have the double door, which is fantastic. Instead of having to pull out two doors and reorientate them, you can just throw down a double door and you're good to go. And there's double door gaps. Um, there's other uh, half windows like you see here. And so it just really makes it um, you know that much more options that you've got to, to design your, um, your buildings the way you want to. Now we're gonna spend some time in here. This is the pattern shape tool. You see all the, the dungeon draft stuff at the top, all the things you're used to seeing from Forgotten Adventures, but now organized. So all the cobble is with the cobble, all the bricks is with the bricks, and just makes it easier to find things. And of course, all of these things are, are uh, colorable to a degree as well, especially now this. This is the new um, carpet that is uh, not dark anymore. So they've lightened it up quite a bit and gives you a lot more color range to play with. Here we've got some fun things. This is an ice overlay. It's not uh, see-through yet, but you can just make it see-through. You can set its um, transparency level, and now you can do fun things like putting things hidden under the ice, you know, frozen in ice. And you've got a couple of different options for that. And so I think that's great. Just the flexibility to like tell stories. You've got you know snow overlays. You've even got snow weather overlays. There's not a rain one yet. Got to imagine something's coming along soon. Um, you've got, of course, these uh, pebbles that you can just lay down anywhere and it'll give you a nice set of pebbles. You can double them up, triple them up, change the orientation, and add as many as you want to try to rough up your terrain. And then these are really important. If you're familiar with Krager's Shadow Pack, these are similar, but I like what um, Strixon and his team have done with this. They've settled on 20%, 40%, 60% opacity, which is nice and flexible. And these will match the paths that they've created as well. So you can make things like drop shadows really easily. Um, here's some more things that have existed for a while, but a lot of people don't know about them. Just elements to grunge up or change or uh, help um, just vary the terrain that you might be working with. Um, these are new. This is uh, water that is already transparent. 
Of course, the second one is colorable, so you can get super creative with red water and green water and all kinds of things that uh, can exist in your world. And, uh, and it's just really easy to change the colors and manipulate these things. So just welcome additions for us to be able to play with as map makers. These will mess up your, your wood floors for you. And again, you can double and triple these up. Um, you can even change their colors a little bit and vary their colors. Uh, you've seen this before. It's a great and you can change it to black, make a duplicate change it to black and drop its opacity and you can make a nice drop floor with grates. All things that I've only ever been able to do with Forgotten Adventures stuff. Here's uh, acid that you can make semi-transparent. You can change its color. It's actually a colorable acid at the very end of this list. Might be easier to work with. But of course you get all of these ground terrains now. So it gives you just ultimate control and more options for what you put on your floors or how you make certain trains blend together into others. It helps you get around the, you know, the four or the eight terrain limitation. Here we're um, working on just taking some of these new patterns and just making thick walls with them. You guys have seen me uh, do this technique before. But just with these new patterns, it just makes for a really, really nice looking wall. As long as you can get the colors to, to start to match, I mean, all of a sudden you've got an infinitely thick wall, however thick that you want it. And I think it's really, really attractive looking. So these are just new additions that come with, with all of these new textures that, um, that Forgotten Adventures introduced. Here we've got space. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff with portals and things floating in the nether. Um, all kinds of water that you can uh, play with now. Mud, and of course, here's the colorable acid, which really gives you infinite flexibility in terms of what you want it to, what you want it to look like, and whether you want it to be transparent and do do interesting things underneath it. Okay, so let's talk about these shadow paths. We'll talk about paths in general, but um, in a second here, we'll get into the shadows. Just wanted to point out some things that. You know, they're not necessarily new, but they're things that you should know about if you're not familiar with Forgotten Adventures. Uh, just everything from footprints to water paths to, to other stuff, it just infinitely increases your palette that you can work with. But now we're at the shadows. So now we're looking at a double shadow. If you're familiar with Krager's pack, he, he started this idea of a double shadow and it's extremely useful. I like what the team has done with it. Um, they've Cons consolidated the options down to what I think are really the right ones, the essentials. And here I'm just, I'm drawing terrain um, with nothing but shadows. And, you know, I've created, you know, what is essentially here, you know, it looks like a raised berm or something like that. And, and so now you've got all this flexibility to even create terrain that you didn't before. Besides the double shadows, you also have the half shadows. And that's what you're going to use to, um, really do the, the bulk of your shading on your maps. Here I'm shading the inside of these walls and I'm effectively lifting these walls off of the ground and I'm giving three dimensionality to the space. Um, I have a whole tutorial on how to do shadows. Uh, it's in my, my dungeon draft playlist. But now look at this, we've got like variations in this shadow. It's not just one you know consistent um, gradient. They've done just a great job of just making it look interesting in a way that, that makes it look more believable to the eye. So I just love these options that are available to us. You can make them wider, you can shrink them down um, just using the dungeon draft tools. So, I mean, just plenty of options to, to kind of do stuff. I did want to talk about these shadows also. Um, if you're familiar with Krager's pack, you, you've seen these types of concepts. They now live inside of Forgotten Adventures. And these are objects, and you can size these objects up and down, and you can place them very specifically wherever you want. And you can search for them by either typing in shadow, or you can um, go to the left-hand side, and they're, they're, they're shadow objects. But look, I just painted the shadows exactly where I wanted them. And if I want to make my um, shadow paths join up properly at my corners, I can just put these down. And it just gives me the ability to you know, quickly make attractive-looking and effective shadows um, with just a ton of control of being able to place down objects exactly where I want them. 
So this is just demonstrating what that looks like when you, when you piece it all together. Again, I recommend you look at my tutorial on working with shadows. It it's, walks you through much more slowly what I'm doing here. And you can just see that the way the joints meet up is just outstanding. The shadows really are the thing that will help you with your map the most. This is interesting. This is a transition from sand to sea, if you're ever creating a beach. It's a path that uh, you can expand or contract in size, and then you can just paint the terrain that you want on one side and sand on the other, and it makes a nice, really believable transition um, for a beach. Other things that you would expect to see, all the curbs, all the, the curtains, some of these things you may find helpful in your map making. There's a, a darker rope now, finally. Uh, there's this other shadow, which has a little bit different look, and it's got an offset. And I'm not sure uh, what it's for, but there's probably some ways that it could be helpful, uh, especially with that offset that could maybe goes underneath the wall for you if you wanted to. Um, other things that, you know, hopefully you're using because they're just really easy to use and they're, they're good looking. Um, but all these different paths. And I just didn't want to forget the wibbly wobbly line. It's the very end. It's hidden. You wouldn't even know it's there because it, it looks invisible from the thumbnail. This is one of the most important assets in the Forgotten Adventures pack. And if you don't know how to use it, watch some of my videos, but it lets you really create anything that you want. It's a line with built-in imperfections that you can use to um, create objects. You can use it to, if you look at any of the Forgotten Adventures artwork, you'll notice it's got this built into it. Um, everything's got, you know, sort of a proper line around it. And it's just super effective for really kind of breaking out of any constraints with um, objects or things that you might have. The objects are all organized, I think, better. You'll notice all the Forgotten Adventures stuff goes straight to the top, which is great because if you're using Forgotten Adventures, you're probably not using the core dungeon draft just because they clash so much. But now everything's right up top where you can find it easier. I like the categories better, uh, just easier to find things. I still just tend to type in the search field and come up with the stuff that I want that way. Um, but all these assets, these geodes and crystals that are just so well executed that you can just spam all over the place and create some really awesome underground things or you know, who knows what you could use these for. Um, but just, you know, get familiar with the different, you know, modular components. There's so much stuff here to explore. I'm not going to try to do it here. What I wanted to do is pause on this. These are all of the, the items that um, can distress your, you know, your floors. And you can set your opacity down and grab these grunge elements use your scatter tool and maybe change up your colors and you can really affect the look of your maps. Um, I've showed this technique in other maps, but now it's built into Forgotten Adventures and with some, some interesting new flair, like um, this grunge type look, you can use uh, ice, you can create like snow where you can cover, you know, ice and snow on top of a roof now. Um, there's just a ton that you can do with these things. And you can grunge up a floor with really any of those tools that you saw. Just whatever gives you the right shape or look or texture that you're looking for. You can change the color, you can change the opacity, and you can create really anything that you can imagine. Here's clouds that you can create now. Um, again, with different colors, and you can mix it up. But you can see what these different things do to the floor. They just completely change the look of the map. And it's important when you're trying to create the, the right you know, look. And these are called overlay patches. I just want to point out the, the very last one is a circle. It's just like the other um, uh, circle shadow objects, but you can color it. And that lets you get like super control. Like maybe you want to place something that looks like snow down. Um, maybe you want to grunge this way and you don't want to commit to whatever shape or texture. You just want to apply some kind of transparent darkening, darkened color to it. This gives you the ability to do that. So now we're going to talk about the roofs. There's roof objects that are super convenient. You can see that these, um, these already include the shadows in the right place, so you don't have to worry about adding shadows anymore. But they also complement and go really well with the Dungeon Draft Roofs tool, which Forgotten Adventures, I have to say, did an amazing job creating and getting their 
you know, their assets to really work with this tool. I mean, this looks great already. And here I'm just using the Gable tool and then I'm adding some dormers to it. And I'm doing it in just a few seconds and the end result is pretty attractive. You know, you can change the shading of it and just really make it look the way that you want. But the ease of making roofs with the quality that the Forgotten Adventures packs have been able to produce is pretty outstanding. You guys know I have not been a fan of any of my roof options, um, but this, uh, this kind of changes the game and makes me pretty happy. Here I'm just combining an object with a roof down below. They included a bunch of paths and other things to just really engineer these roofs any way that you want. Here I'm just adding a drop shadow um, using that technique that I used earlier. But you've just got a lot to work with and you can make your roofs look, you know, whatever, however you want them to look, but they'll, they'll look way better than they, they've ever looked before. The last thing I'll show you is the lights. So the, the team also introduced all these different lighting options. Um, there's you know, canopies that have existed, but here you can put a spotlight directly on something. You've got these amazing things, which are highlights. You'll notice there's highlights in the artwork already on the edge of that desk. They included the ability to add highlights to anything. And I find that just fantastic. When you start getting into making prefabs and making things that look really good, that you, you, know, that you can move around to different maps, those little highlights just add so much to it. And you just see the kind of control that I can get from these different lighting options. I recommend you come in here and explore it. And of course, this has always been difficult to do in Dungeon Draft, but now they've also added you know, lighting from windows. So you can make it look like lights pouring in from a window without sort of messing around with all the other lighting. And it gets a little out of control with just the core Dungeon Draft. But now you have the option. So, so that's it. So that's the, the fast walkthrough. Here's just another example of what you can make with Forgotten Adventures assets. This is a map that I did that I really like. That's, um, it's just, you know, it's kind of a really good example of the type of detail and quality that you can get from, you know, FA. They've done all the hard work with the artwork and you just have to put it together. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, I hope you go and pick up the, the new assets. They are really a lot of fun to work with. And of course, stop by my Discord or follow my uh, YouTube channel if you wanna see how I make in excruciating detail these maps and how you can leverage these Forgotten Adventures assets to do, to do similar things. In the meantime, uh, have fun and, and have fun making your maps.